Hello and welcome back to another workshop video. Now today I have some really awesome items to show off. I have been so excited about showing some of these off for the longest time. And this week, I finally get to showcase them, dude. I am so excited to get into this one. Now, we're going to be starting off here with an amazing set for the Scout. This is the Prom King set, starting off here with the Showtime Slick. This is going to give him a really combed up, kind of dapper hairstyle. Of course, it's meant to go with this amazing suit cosmetic, and believe me, we will be getting into that. I am so excited to talk about that thing. But the hair cosmetic itself is really nice. I love hair cosmetics, especially on Scout, because he usually has like that buzz cut. And of course, the paint region is going to paint all of it because it's hair. It wouldn't make sense if it didn't paint the entire thing. Paintability is especially important on hair cosmetics because, of course, you can do all kinds of different hair color. Gray, black, brown, ginger, lime. I mean, all of the shades are here. And they do have some loadouts here. Now, this is going to be really, really good for just mixing into a ton of different loadouts. I really like how it looks with the poolside polo. I think that looks really good. But of course, you know why I'm here. I'm here for the deluxe tux. Now, I have completely devoted myself to the Sunday vest. I've been giving it awards every single Sunday for almost an entire year of my life. I absolutely love suit cosmetics. I really want Scout to have a good suit cosmetic because... I, I'm honestly so tired of the Ticket Boy and the Tuxi. They both have their own special little quirks. And now my absolute favorite is the Sunday Vest, but I would love to see the Deluxe Tux in-game. The model is amazing. The colors are really good. This is everything you want to see in a formal Scout Body Cosmetic. It's going to be able to tie into all kinds of really fun loadouts. Personally, I think it would tie really well into a white painted law and a catcher's companion. <coughs> now what's nice about this is it has two different styles. It has one style that paints the shirt like this, but then it has a second style that paints the bow tie, which it's just nice to have that option. Like if I had one of these for my loadout, I could use this style, paint it Australian gold, and then I have the white that ties into my law. That little bit of gold ties into the badge on my law. It's those little details like that that I just think are really neat. And from what I can see here, this is not going to have the abhorrent clipping issues that the Ticket Boy has. I mean, look at him. He is absolutely busting it down and he is not clipping whatsoever. This is what I love to see, dude. Like, I, I do not say this lightly because I love the Sunday Vest. It is my favorite workshop item of all time besides the Catcher's Companion. But this, there are very few suit cosmetics that I would be happy to see get in instead of the Sunday vest, but this is one of them. This is like a hall pass. I still love the Sunday vest, but if the Deluxe Tux gets into the game, you know I'm using it, dude. Like, this thing is amazing. Frankly, I blame Big Bob for making such an amazing scout suit cosmetic. Why would you do this to me? Are you trying to fracture my relationships? Okay, I've been going for almost a year strong with the Sunday vest. How could you do this to me, man? Now, we're going to follow that one up with a really novel war paint. This is the comic stripped war paint. And as you can probably guess, the main texture of it is going to be this original comic that the creators made. And this is something that I thought was really neat because, like, CSGO has a couple skins like this. Like, they have the Pop Op, they have the Fizzy Pop M4A1S. And I think that kind of skin looks really cool. Of course, I know CSGO and TF2 have different art styles, but I think this looks really nice as a war paint. Now, I don't think this war paint is going to be everyone's cup of tea. Personally, I really like it. I love that it's team colored. You're going to be able to tie this into loadouts super easily because it's just team colored, it's white, and then it's got some gray. Very easy to work with. And you know, I am a sucker for rare rolls for collectability in war paints. And imagine having like a really good pattern of this where you have like a certain part of the comic like this general freedom right on the barrel. That's cool, man. That's just something that I think is really neat. And I think that concept works really well here. The comic texture is really busy. So I'm glad that they balanced it out with this kind of solid gray, very neutral, very easy to tie into loadouts. 
I think that was a good decision. And they really do show it off on a lot of weapons. Like, I, I kind of have to speed up here. It looks really nice. I like it on the pistol quite a lot. That That is a great roll. Oh, wow. We keep going. They, they showed it on, like, every weapon. Almost every weapon. Like, there's a lot here. Okay, it's not every weapon, but, like, it might it might as well be, dude. This is a lot to show off. I, I like the no on the tip of the medigun. That <laughs> That's great. I really want to see a holy mackerel where this no is mapped right next to the holy mackerel's lips. That would be amazing, dude. I would pay so much money for one of those. This is what I mean when I say, like, those random rolls that collect ability. That's fun to me, man. I really like stuff like that. It adds so much depth to a war paint, man. I just, I think it's neat. And I really think this thing is going to shine on the black box. Because if you get, like, a good orientation, you're going to be able to have a whole section of this comic book just on your gun. Like, you're actually going to be able to read it which is pretty cool. And they do even have a video showing it off in-game here, just so you can get an even better look at it. They have it here on the shotgun. I think this is cool, man. I know not everyone is going to like this because the, the comic texture is really busy. Not everyone is going to dig that sort of thing. Personally, I think it's really cool, I, especially because it's team colored. It's got that gray. I think it, it kind of balances out that very busy... Uh, comic texture well i think this is a really cool idea i like that it's an original comic they didn't take like one of the valve comics or like one of the update comics they made their own thing as far as i know this is a completely original comic which is just nice to see man i like that now we're going to be following that one up with the Soviet Stetson. Now, I really like this promotional poster, but I'm getting the feeling that this is like a reference to something that I am just not getting. So if this is like a reference cosmetic, let me know like what character or what show, movie, anime, whatever it's referencing down in the comments below. I'm curious. But even any possible reference aside, this is a really cool hat. It's well modeled. It's got these shiny bullets on the front, couple of bullet holes on the side of the hat. It's got one eye covered, which is really unique. I think that's a cool little bit of detail. But what's really nice about it is if you don't like it, there is a style to remove that. Personally, I think the original style is hilarious. I just imagine a half blind man running around with a minigun spraying it everywhere wildly. That is peak heavy in my opinion. They do have some loadouts with it over here. And I do think this is just scratching the surface of what you could be able to do with this. I think this would be really good obviously for like a cowboy kind of loadout i think that would be fun and the paint region is really good as well it's going to paint all of the fabric on this cosmetic of course if you're using the second style it's just going to paint this top band here and they have the concept art which is always something i like to see it looks like they sized up the hat a little bit which i think was definitely a good decision but yeah pretty cool to see where it came from overall solid hat for the heavy but this is bugging me I really feel like this is a reference that's just going over my head. Whoosh. Now here is a cosmetic set that I have been so excited to talk about for over a month at this point. This is the Frontline Firebug set for the Pyro. I am a sucker, an absolute sucker for war-themed cosmetics in TF2. I think they look awesome. I think they fit the mercenaries well. This is the kind of thing that I just think is really, really cool. They've got an awesome promotional poster showing this thing off, and we are going to be starting off with the hat, the Impact Impaler. Now, this is going to have two styles. It's going to have a style with and without the titular Impaler, which is nice that they included that because I think the spike is cool, but I also can imagine some loadout where it would be better without the spike. And in general, this is is just a really cool looking helmet of course it is going to be team colored so it's going to be like this very muted red on red team and this nice blue color on blue team and i believe it corresponds to like the color of pyro's pants down here which is a nice little detail keeping the color palette consistent i see you i see you they do have some loadouts with it over here now obviously pyro has so many items that are going to pair amazingly with this the foster's facade with the wanderer's wear is just insanely good i think that's an amazing loadout with the mayor mask also really good i could list off loadouts for this thing all day long the paint region definitely helps a lot too it is going to paint the entire helmet but not the spike 
And of course, the style without the spike is still just going to paint the helmet normally. But then we move on to the mask cosmetic, the masked loyalty. Now, this bad boy is going to have three different styles. So you're going to have a style like this. The second style is going to kind of invert that pattern. And then for style three, it's just going to paint the entire thing. And I think it was a really good decision to do different styles, especially style three. I really, really like style three. And it's also going to include some pockets. As you can see over here, that pocket and that pocket are part of the cosmetic. And something that I just noticed is on red team, it has like the golden detailing. It has the golden buttons, the golden spike. But then on blue team, it replaces it with silver. I think that's a pretty cool little detail. And because this is a three piece set and every item of that set does that same gold and silver thing, it's going to match up really well. Now, as far as the mask goes, I'm sure it goes without saying that you are going to be able to do some insanely cool loadouts with this thing. That is actually a really cool use of the second style. I think that doing like scary looking halloween loadouts with it is going to be really fun now the paint region is pretty straightforward this is the paint region for the first style which is going to paint it like this but then of course you do have the other two styles where it paints the skull instead of the rest of the mask and then the third style where it just paints everything but this is where things get absolutely insane this is the torturous trench coat i i do not say this loosely this is one of the best pyro body cosmetics I have ever seen, period. It is insanely good, dude. And this is the kind of thing that I just don't understand why we don't already have this for pyro. This would be so good on pyro. He has so many items that would go with it. It would be amazing. It is insanely well made. I, I love it everything about this dude it looks so good there is a reason why it has so many awards and it deserves every single one of them here is but a taste of the different loadouts you can do with this and frankly i think this is just barely barely scratching the surface like you don't have to just use this for like a war theme you could do like a Patriot's Peak loadout with this. You could take it in a more upscale direction, which I think would look really cool. And the paint region is going to paint the little shoulder pads here. Frankly, I don't think there was really a better paint region here. That, that's good. That's fine. That's all right. This is one of those items that doesn't really need paint, but I mean, yeah, you might as well have it. It's no big deal. It's there for the people who want it, but overall, dude, this is an absolutely amazing set for the pyro. If you are not going down into the description and voting for these items at the end of the video, what is wrong with you, dude? This is like, this is as good as it gets. This video has some absolute heavy hitters. This is one of them. Like, just go down there and vote for it. Seriously, it's so good. Next up, we have the Badlands War Paint. Now, this, I think, is a really interesting concept. It is going to be based around like those Badlands rocks where, you know, it has like the layers and layers and layers of different rocks. You can see all of the different colors going through it. I think that kind of thing is super beautiful. I love that aesthetic. So this war paint was right up my alley. And I think it looks really nice. I think it's fitting for TF2. Now, if I had to nitpick a little bit, this thing is pretty red. I mean, I know it's still technically brown, but it's a pretty red brown, you know? Some kind of blue team version could have been nice, but at the same time, this is no worse than like Glacial Glazed or Igloo or some of the blue war paints that we have. And I rarely see anyone getting confused about team color because of those, so this would be completely fine, I think. Obviously, this doesn't have a team variant because this is how it looks in real life. This was the reference. It makes sense, and I think it still looks really, really good. It's just the slightest of slight nitpicks. It looks really nice on different weapons. I like the Sticky Bomb Launcher quite a bit. I almost wonder if you could get this rotated a different way. So like there's a stripe of different color rocks going through like the stripes uh, on the drum of the Sticky Bomb Launcher. I think that could look really cool. Like you have gray, you have red, you have brown going through there. That could look insane actually. I would really like to see something like that. And then they do show off the wear down here. I don't believe it has any custom wear. I don't think it really needs it. Overall, I think this is a really good concept for a war paint. Only nitpick is maybe make a team color version. I know the rocks don't look like that in real life, but it might help convert it to TF2 just that little bit better. That being said, though, this looks insane. 
really good job on the texture i think it looks nice dude now we're going to be having a look at the shotgunner shield now this is going to be a helmet themed around the stock shotgun it's going to be using all of the same colors which is something that i think is a really good concept it reminds me a lot of like the hats we used to get in conjunction with weapons so like uh like the jumpers jeep cap or the grenaders soft cap you know they kind of themed around the weapons that they were in a set with that's what this kind of reminds me of and i love that vibe i think that's a really cool theme for a hat this is going to be multi-class so every single class that can equip the shotgun can equip this hat to go with it the model on this is really nice i love the shotgun shells on the side here the front panel with like the bullet holes in it is really cool as well. I think that's a really nice touch. And I think it fits the mercenaries really well. I mean, obviously it's going to be best on soldier. Soldier is just the helmet guy. It looks amazing, but even on like heavy engineer, it pulls its weight, man. I think it looks good. And you're going to be able to do some really awesome loadouts. Now I am a flat catcher enjoyer. I love that cosmetic to death. And this is the perfect perfect combo for it this is the kind of thing i love to see dude that just looks amazing but they have even more on pyro it's going to be really applicable because pyro has so many different military themed cosmetics you're going to be able to have an absolute field day with this thing heavy same thing he's got a ton of different military cosmetics the one in the back corner here goes extremely hard and then finally we have engineer honestly that is pretty good i like that side one there this one kind of gives me like a like a biker kind of vibe I, I like that i like that and then of course the paint region is going to paint the helmet part overall super solid hat i really hope to see more hats doing this theme of like theming around a weapon using like the ammo and the properties of it and the colors from it that is such a cool way to do cosmetics i think it's really fun dude i really like this a lot now we're going to be getting into a really awesome set for the engineer starting off here with the splinter dell hat it's got this really nice poster at the front here showing off the entire set I love the different poses that they have. One's on the radio, one's ready for action. One is borderline A posing and I am terrified of him. And of course they show off the three different styles this cosmetic has. We have the Under Siege, the Armageddon, and the Ultimate Mayhem. And I really like that they do these different styles, especially the Under Siege and the Armageddon. I think that is a really nice difference in style. Engineer has nothing like this, but at the same time, it's nice to have a style without that mask on there. And then for the people who are just built a little different. <laughs> There is the ultimate mayhem style. Frankly, I am terrified of it. I see it in my nightmares. No, <laughs> just, just no, just no, 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 no. Keep them away from me. Now they do have some loadouts here with the under siege style. I think you're going to be able to do some really awesome stuff with it, but I cannot stress how awesome these styles are. I mean, you can do some really awesome, like military themed loadouts with this robber themed loadouts. Of course, you can make the guy from splinter cell, which would be pretty fun. But things are taken to the next level when we have a look at the Bulletproof Builder. This is going to be the body cosmetic for the set. And this is something that I think Engineer has needed for a long time. Like this military vest kind of thing. A lot of classes have a cosmetic like this. And I think Engineer would be able to make really good use of it. I like the pockets. I love how they follow the secondary team coloring, really matching the cable well. I think that secondary team coloring is super important to have, especially on Engineer because he has so much of it. I also really like how it says Dell on the back of it. That's a nice touch. And if that wasn't enough for you, it also has two different styles. You have the tactical style and the tactical style. Now, what is the difference between tactical and tactical, you ask? Camo, of course, all right? You might be tactical. But you're not tactical unless you have camo. This is just an established fact. And they do show off some loadouts here that use the tactical style. This is going to be really versatile. You're going to be able to pair this with so many different items. I love how it pairs with the Lawn Maker's alternate style. That is really nice. Overall, really good set for the Engineer. I would love to see this get in. I think it would add a lot to Engineer's loadout possibilities. And it would be really fun to mess around with. Plus, it's just insanely well made. Like, th this is good stuff, man. 
Now we're going to be having a look at the underdeveloped war paint. Now, if you've seen my April Fool's Workshop review, you would remember this war paint because it was an April Fool's submission. And it was an April Fool's submission that, unironically, I thought was really cool. And what's really nice is the creator took that and made a more legit version, like actually thinking about color palettes and actually trying to make it look really good. And the result of that is this really nice cream spirit colored war paint, of course, based off like dev textures and things like that. And I think this is really awesome. First of all, I love the secondary team color going on. This is going to tie into loadouts really, really well, especially on engineer. And then you have these two different gray colors, which yes, I know are part of the reference, but at the same time, they're going to be neutral. So they're going to tie into loadouts really well. And as it wears, it's going to tie into that generally gray wear color super well. Because most weapons in the game wear to be like some form of black or gray, you know? So even in Battle Scarred, this thing is going to look pretty good. And they show it off on literally every single weapon in the entire game, which I really do appreciate. But it is a lot to go through, so we are just going to kind of have a nice little scroll through. I really like this, though. I think you're going to be able to tie this into some really interesting loadouts, especially on Engineer. On the wrenches, it is so cool, man. I would probably use this on a wrench and like a rescue ranger. I think that would be amazing. I also really like how it looks on the Medigun, like the Uber saw. There are just some where the colors map a certain way, and it just really works for me. Got it on the sniper and the spy weapons. Kind of have a <laughs> discount Australian sniper rifle and a discount Australian knife. Uh, <laughs> if this gets in, I'm, I'm going to use it on a sniper rifle and a, and a knife. I'm going to name it that. And then of course, we do have the multi-class items. And then they do have some in-game screenshots, of course, on the legendary map. And in-game, I think this looks really good. I mean, I know this started as an April Fool's joke, but genuinely, I could see this getting in as, like, a mercenary grade. It's a cool reference, but it looks good. Like, this would have a genuine use. You would be able to tie this into loadouts. I like this one, man. And I think the story behind it is really interesting because I don't think the creator was expecting people to go, wait, this is actually cool. <laughs> So then they went and made like a serious version. I just think that's cool. Like that's a good story behind an item. That's going to be followed up by the brass belt. Now this is something I love to see because we all know, okay, Heavy's stock bullet belt. It's not bullets, it's crayons. <laughs> it is literally crayons. In general, I would say the TF2 mercenaries have aged pretty gracefully. That cannot be said for Heavy's bullet belt. So I really love to see a revamped, really nice, redone bullet belt. They've got a nice poster showing it off here, and this is going to look absolutely amazing. It's going to be nice and shiny. The bullets actually look like bullets. I know it's shocking. And you're going to be able to use this in some really awesome loadouts. I like the Rambo thing they got going on. I like the military things that they're doing. There is a lot of different loadouts that would really benefit from having this. And because it's so shiny and it's so loud, imagine this with like an Australian Tommy Slav or an Australian minigun. That would look amazing. It's even paintable. It's going to paint the side of the bullet here. Not a massive paint region, but like it's something. You can kind of see it. You can see it well over here. You can see how it's red on the side here. And then they have a bunch of in-game screenshots. And as you can see, look at it with the Australian Tommy Slav. It's so good, man. I also think it's really cool with the heavyweight champ belt. Just that brass on brass almost just looks really cool. Pairing it with the eviction notice would look absolutely insane. It's not too bad with the brass beast either, because it's just that theme, you know? Overall, insanely cool cosmetic. I, this is something that I just think we should have had a long time ago. Just a better bullet belt for heavy. Why not, man? This would be a perfect mercenary grade item. And we're going to be wrapping things off with the Bubble Breeze Unusual Effect. Gotta say, I really like the promotional poster that they've done here. This is going to be like a rainbow bubble unusual effect. I love how loud it is. It has so many bubbles going on. It has so many sparkles and things. It has a little popping animation where it pops into little sparkles. There's a lot of attention to detail that has gone into this, especially with the little duck bubble. It's a rare sprite. It shows up every once in a while. Just something to add a little bit of flavor 
to otherwise very uniform bubble. And I like this one quite a lot because I think this would tie amazingly into Pyroland themed loadouts, especially of course on Pyro with like the Rain Blower, the Lolly Chop, the whole kit and caboodle, all of the Pyroland stuff. I think that could be really awesome. And in general, I just think it looks really cool. It's nice and loud, but it's not too much in my opinion. It's colorful, but it's not like just in your face, super, super loud. It's just subdued enough to where I think it works amazingly. Normally, I'm not the biggest fan of like pink and rainbows and sparkles, but I don't know, man, this one just really does it for me. I think it's a cool effect. It was really well executed and you're going to be able to tie it into some really nice loadouts. I like this one, man. I think it's cool. That's going to be the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end here. Remember, all of the links to these workshop items are going to be down in the description. So please go down there, vote yes, favorite them, and give them some awards if you're so inclined. The amount of quality on the workshop has just been insane. Like, I, I had to move this series from being weekly to two episodes per week because I just, I wanted to cover all of the amazing items that I wanted to feature before the summer update comes out. Like, they are pumping out bangers faster than I can talk about them. And hey, if you're new here, I did just say I do two of these videos per week all the way up until the summer update. So if you're new, please do be sure to subscribe. It would really help me out because I'm trying to build up this series to be a platform for really amazing work on the workshop. Show some support to the incredible workshoppers that make these updates possible. But with that, I will see you in the next one. Ah!